All right, so the streets have a way of sometimes turning relatives against each other, and this is the case with Red O'Bank and Boozy Badass. Both are two different generations of rappers repping Baton Rouge, but despite their family ties, they've had a rocky relationship, and it's for a reason which runs deep. So why exactly are these two rappers not on good terms? Stay tuned as I bring you the details. But before we start the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the notification button so you get notified every time I drop any videos. So Boozy Badass has been around in the rap scene since the 90s and has come a long way to establish himself as one of the most sought after and successful rappers in the game. Fred O'Bang, on the other hand, is a new generation rapper who began his rap career a few years ago. However, he's made quite the name for himself and has continued to create a lot of buzz on the scene. Alright, so there's no doubt that these two rappers have both done their part in announcing Baton Rouge to the world due to their creative skill. There's something much deeper connecting them than their profession and it's the fact that they're cousins. Fred O'Bang himself made this revelation during an interview with Vlad TV in which he said that they were related through one of his or Boozy's grandma's relatives. Our regular guest, Boosie, is actually your cousin. Yeah. Okay, how are you guys related exactly? I think it's through his grandma. I'm a Givens and she a Givens, I think some way, it's some way like that. I can't, I can't really remember. One of your grandmother's relatives or his grandmother's relatives is somehow connected to you. Now, prior to learning that they were cousins, both Fredo and Boozy had never really exchanged any words, but after the news of their family ties got out in the open, Fredo saw the whole situation as a perfect opportunity to link up with the veteran rapper. His first attempt to connect with Boozy was by sending him a message on Instagram, in which he stated his desire to be a part of Boozy's concert known as Boozy Bash. Now, for those who don't know, Boozy Bash is an annual concert hosted by Boozy Badass, as it helps to celebrate and showcase Southern rap and culture. Well, Fredo never made it to the concert because Boozy never responded to his message. This situation soon became public news and fans began to wonder why Boozy seemed to be ignoring Fredo. A while after this situation, Boozy got on an interview and he shed some light on the situation and why he didn't respond to Fredo's direct message on Instagram. In the interview, he revealed that he wanted what was best for rappers coming from Baton Rouge, but despite this, there was a whole lot of things that Fredo did not know about. He also confirmed that Fredo was his cousin and that he had learned about their family ties from his great auntie. This is what he had to say at the time. It's a lot of stuff that Fredo don't know about. Fredo my cousin. It's a lot of shit that niggas don't know about. It's a lot of shit this nigga don't know about. It's a lot of shit he don't know about as far as that situation. I found out he was my cousin by great auntie. She told me a year or something ago. It ain't no hate or anything like that. Anybody in the city who doing they thing, you know I want niggas to blow. A few months after this, in December 2020, Boozy got on another interview where he was asked about his relationship with Fredo and TBG, but he would entirely dodge the question this time around. He refused to shed any light on the matter, saying that it wasn't anything serious, and he didn't want to talk about situations pertaining to Baton Rouge. The one thing that I'm seeing in the timeline a lot is whatever your connection is with Fredo Bang and TBG. Can you talk about that? Uh, I don't really want to talk about that. I don't really want to talk about that. Despite all of this, and the fact that Boozy seemed to be avoiding him at all costs, Fredo didn't give up on trying to connect with him, and it wasn't long before his persistency was rewarded. He finally got to talk one-on-one -on -one with Boozy after the two met at an airport in Atlanta. After the conversation, Boozy then gave Fredo his number, with the promise they were going to work on some music projects together. Well, Fredo called that number given to him, but Boozy never picked up. During an interview, Fredo even felt that Boozy might have given him a wrong number. But regardless of this, he stated that he really wanted him and Boozy to make music together. I ain't gonna lie, uh, I think he just gave me a wrong number. You think? I think so. I ain't gonna, I, I, don't, don't stamp me on it, but I think he gave me a wrong number. I do want a verse okay. from him, though. I, I would like the verse if he ever responds to me. Now, during a different interview with The Breakfast Club, Fredo gave some hints as to why Boozy was seemingly avoiding him. Well, the reason for this is because Boozy isn't a big fan of the crew Fredo's affiliated with. So, what was Boozy's history with this crew, and how did it affect his relationship with Fredo? A look into the not-so-distant past will provide some of the answers. The group Fredo is affiliated with is known as the Top Boy Gorilla, or TBG for short. This crew has been around since the 90s, and surprisingly even had a great relationship with Boozy Badass. The founder of TBG was a guy called Lil Ivy, and he and Boozy were pretty close. 
Lil Ivy was also a rapper, and he and Boozy were at the time making waves locally in Baton Rouge, but Boozy was much more popular at the time. Boozy was signed to Trill Entertainment at the time, but in 2005, Fortune smiled on him and he got a major record deal with Warner Brothers Records. This was a major milestone in Boozy's music career, but it would also signal the beginning of some major problems between him and TBG. Word on the streets is that after this, Trill Entertainment tried to sign Lil Ivy, but for some reason, Boozy allegedly did not let this deal happen. And this situation allegedly began to cause a rift in Boozy and Ivy's relationship. Well, a few months down the line, Lil Ivy was shot and killed. This incident occurred in April 2005, and according to reports, a patrol officer who was driving through the area noticed a car that crashed into a pillar. The officer moved closer to investigate the accident, but the situation turned out far worse than he expected. Inside the car were Lil Ivy and two other men by the names of Kevin Henderson and Joshua Thomas, and all three of them had been shot. Authorities believe that someone had pulled up beside the men's car and then opened fire. Also, a fight had broken out at a club earlier, and authorities believed that the shooting and the fight was tied in some way. Well, word on the streets is that on the day that Lil Ivy got killed, Boozy had allegedly been at the club with Lil Ivy, but then a fight had broken out at the same club, so Boozy had to leave. And it was after the incident that Lil Ivy was shot and killed. After this, word started going around that Boozy allegedly had something to do with Lil Ivy's death because of the label issue that was on ground before he was killed. Boozy has since denied this allegation, but it still didn't stop Lil Ivy's son and nephew from coming for him years later. Lil Ivy's nephew, Lit Yoshi, is affiliated with the TBG crew, and during an Instagram Live, he came out to throw shade at Boozy and even accused him of being the reason why Lil Ivy got killed. During the Live, he also alleged that TBG was Boozy's muscle, but after Boozy became successful, he didn't extend a helping hand because he wanted all the success for himself. Lit Yoshi also addressed another issue on the IG Live in which he believed Boozy had been dissing him. So what was this about? Well, a nephew of Boozy, known as Boozy Boy B, had just gotten out of jail at the time and also happened to celebrate his birthday. In a post on Instagram, Boozy had tagged his nephew, wishing him a happy birthday, and in the process referred to him as the real head youngin. Well, as it turned out, Lit Yoshi wasn't pleased about this because the real head youngin was a title he reserved for himself and he felt disrespected by Boozy, addressing someone else with that title. Birthday, this the real head. Man, nigga, never, nigga, no, I've been calling myself head younger before, before G Money and before G Money and before G died. I've been saying head younger. And that nigga, no, how you went there to Lit Jose? Lit Yoshi wasn't the only Lil Ivy family member that had issues with Boozy and threw shots at him. Lil Ivy's son, Lil Ivy Jr., also made claims similar to Lit Yoshi's own about Boozy. In an IG Live, Lil Ivy Jr. said that Boozy did all he did because he allegedly wanted Lil Ivy's spot back in the days. Now, during an interview a few years back, Boozy claimed that he adopted Lil Ivy Jr. after his father was shot and killed. You have eight biological children, yeah. but you have two other children yeah, who I adopt. you take care of. Yeah, yeah. And, and these are friends who got killed? Yeah, they're killed? my two best friends. My two best friends who got killed is Bleak Daughter and, uh, and my boy Ivy, his little boy. But Lil Ivy Jr. himself would call Boozy out during his IG Live, that it was all cap, and that Boozy never adopted him. He added that his mother had been the one taking care of him without any contribution from Boozy. Lil Ivy Jr.'s sister also made similar claims saying that Boozy was only lying and had not been there for the family after her father's death. Stop lying. Don't go to them interviews and lie. Don't do none of that. Don't do none of that. You adopted Ivy. When the fuck did that happen? Like, please let me know. Well, amidst all this bad blood, Boozy's son, Tootie Raw, got mixed in the chaos by releasing a diss track titled Fucked Up, which was aimed at TBG. Well, despite this sour relationship between TBG and Boozy, Fredo was not really bothered, but still had a deep respect for the veteran rapper. He continued to try and connect with Boozy, but it seemed Boozy wasn't interested in such. In March 2022, the relationship between Fredo and Boozy once again became the topic of discussion following an incident. Well, it happened that Fredo was kicked out of a concert that he had been scheduled to perform at. The lineup at the concert also featured Boozy and Webby. Fredo had made the situation known in a post on his Instagram story. The post contained a promotional poster from the concert, and across the front of it, he had written the following. They kicked me off this show, but that's what happens when you're the most hated. A frustrated Fredo also added in another story. Real niggas don't stop other niggas money, no matter how much they don't like them. After this, he went on to promote another upcoming show featuring Webby, and he followed this by also sharing an alleged message he had sent to Boozy on Instagram. The message reads, 
Damn blood, you taking food out my mouth. Yes. You can't do a show with me on it? With that message, Fredo implied that he believed that Boozy was allegedly the reason why he had been kicked off the concert in the first place since it had happened for no apparent reason. Well, Fredo wasn't done with letting out the frustration and disappointment he felt about his removal from the concert. In a video, he took shots at several people, including those who didn't like his music in the label. He also addressed the show he was kicked off of, saying the reason for this was probably because he was getting paid more and the organizers were trying to stay within their budget, meaning that they couldn't afford him. Well, it's crazy how Fredo's relationship with Boozy had been affected due to something that happened long even before Fredo was on the scene. And with the way things are, it's unlikely that both rappers' relationships will improve anytime soon. Let me know what you think about this whole situation in the comment section down below. Hey you, yeah you, did you like the video? Great, we got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like, and all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees, but you have to click on it fast because this message is self-destruct in 5 seconds.